Um, almost moving into flat terrain, which is interesting. Uh, the dips are getting bought, and it has been three days of a good run for the market. So perhaps uh, you know that's something that could continue. Cement is picking up. Altotech Cement is your big winner right now, and then you have steel, JSW Steel, a couple of other metal players like Hindalco also looking pretty good. But after reporting a very strong quarter three, the Indigo CEO Peter Elber says that demand continues to be strong and the airline is confident of achieving the higher end of their capacity outlook of 13 to 17 percent. Shireen caught up with Indigo CEO Peter Elbers and began by asking him about the quarter gone by, the supply chain risks. More importantly, there's a lot of competition coming in this year. How are they going to brace themselves for that? Take a look. The third quarter have been a, a wonderful and good quarter for us, which was actually, to be fair, long awaited for. Um, after all the difficult quarters we had throughout COVID and even the first uh, quarters recovering from COVID, uh, we have set in motion a wide range of actions and initiatives. And these have coincided with a very strong market situation, actually. Uh, and that combination of a strong market situation initiatives on our side has led to these, uh, these very strong uh, Q3 results. Will you be able to hold yields uh, and deliver and replicate the kind of success that you saw as far as Q3 is concerned? And more importantly, your guidance of being operationally profitable for FY23, excluding Forex losses, do you hold that guidance? Well, there's always some seasonality, of course, in every quarter, and, and obviously Q3 is a very strong quarter. But with the with the solid demand we're, we're seeking made us to uh, to be confident looking to the future. I'm not giving any precise numbers in terms of outlook or in terms of precise uh, margins going forward. Uh, but again, the range of initiatives we're taking, the solid market demand, the upbeat uh, economic situation in India, all these factors uh, make us very confident in, in looking forward uh, and uh, basically providing a capacity uh, guidance which we set initially for the entire full year 23 in the range of 13 to 17 percent. We will be ending up at the very high end of that, more like 17 to 18 percent, basically underlining uh, that solid demand and confidence we have in the market. So let's understand the, the initiatives that you have taken, one, to address the supply side issues, B, to take on competitive pressure, which is starting to build now. I'll get to the Air India order in just a second, but both on addressing the supply side issues uh, what can we expect beyond the measures already taken well we have uh, indeed the supply chain uh, challenges which is a global challenge uh, uh, indeed uh, we have taken various measures to to address that one was to extend some of the existing leases uh, and and keep some of the fleet in the operation which we were initially uh, supposed to return uh, we have introduced a wet lease operation in order to to deal with that again all temporary measures uh, to deal with the global supply chain challenges against the backdrop of a very solid and strong uh, demand here when it comes to dealing with, with competitive challenges, we have taken the initiatives, in fact, to reinforce uh, the, the, the strong points which have made Indigo uh, into a, a, a wonderful company, what it has been doing for the past 16 years. So we have reinforced our customer promise, on-time performance being one of them. And I'm very, very proud, actually, on the teams that were back uh, in, uh, in November and December when it comes to the number one on-time performance. International operations are expected to grow faster. That is what you've guided for. You've also said that you expect the international operations to contribute nearly 23% uh, of, uh, uh, of your asks as, uh, uh, and you've guided for about 30% in FY24. Now, you know, what should we expect in terms of additions as far as destinations are concerned, inking more code share, code share agreements with airlines, etc.? How do you really see your international plans building on where you are today? Well, Indigo started 16 years ago as a domestic as a domestic carrier. Uh, we've had a wonderful journey over these years, and today we do operate uh, a total of 76 domestic destinations, supplemented by 26 international. So, if you look to today's composition in terms of destination mix, it's about uh, 25, 20, 25 percent um, is on the international side, and there's there's 75 uh, percent on the domestic side. When it comes to our total production number. It's, it's even slightly less. It's more in the range of 20-ish percent we do international. 
with the growth of India, with the economic development of India, with the position India is taking more and more on the global stage and with foreign investments coming in and in Indian manufacturers making products here and exporting them, uh, we, we do see clearly an international growth which is, which is stepping up. Um, and in addition to that, the share of Indian carriers in the international uh, traffic, uh, we believe still has a lot of room to, to improve and to increase that share. For 2023, you gave me a list of the destinations that you are looking at adding on. How many do you expect to add on in 2023 itself in terms of international destinations? And how many, what is going to be the flight, flight frequency as well? Well, in, in terms of, again, today, 76 domestic and 26 international, I do expect that for the year 20, the calendar year 23 or fiscal year 24, we, we would expect to have some anywhere between 10 and 50 new destinations to be opened in a mixture of domestic and international. The ones we have announced already domestic are the Ramsala and Nasik, uh, and international, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, uh, we, we do I, Nairobi and Jakarta as, as ones. We're looking at Central Asia, and depending on the speed of further opening of China, we'll further open up China as well. So. I, I do expect that this 10 to 15 new destinations would be roughly split 50-50 between domestic and, and international. Um, for us, it's very important to continue to build on the strength of what, what has made Indigo to what it is with an unparalleled domestic network with all these destinations. And, and not only destinations, really, it's also a set of 400 different routes we fly direct in the country. And that, that in itself, I think it's, it's a great asset for all the Indian travelers who can now fly direct from one point to the other uh, within the country itself. But let's now talk about the competitive landscape. You've got a resurgent Air India. Uh, you've, of course, got Vistara as well. And, of course, the two are likely to be merged by the target, of course, is uh, March of next year. Uh, you've then got Akasa. And we don't know whether Jet will eventually fly in 2023 or not. But there is a possibility of that. How are you addressing the competitive landscape? And what do you make of the two orders placed by Air India uh, and what it would mean as far as your own fleet addition is concerned? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's uh, a, a couple of questions you combine in one, and let me try to address all of them. Um, speaking about the, uh, the order itself, I think it speaks to the, to the confidence and the, uh, the belief in the growth of, of India as, a, as an upcoming aviation giant. Today, India, I would say, is, is underserved when it comes to aviation itself and the growth we're facing actually today and the expectations going forward uh, basically are a are a proof of the belief in, in the further growth of that Indian of the of the Indian market. The order which is being placed is, is obviously long awaited for and, and a lot of been uh, a lot of been speculated about. And if you were to take the top ten airline orders in the world today, uh, two out of these ten and probably two out of five uh, are, are in fact by Indian carriers. One of them is Indigo. We do have uh, a little short of 500 aircraft on order based on, on existing orders. And now there's the Air India one. So that basically speaks to the, uh, to the potential and the size of the market uh, in India. Um, and, and as such, uh, Indigo, uh, we draft our own course, we draft our own, uh, our own plan. So um, the order itself, uh, it is there. I think for Indigo, we, we placed our order uh, for growth already in 2019. We do have actually a steady flow of deliveries already uh, now and in the years to come. And, and obviously for us, we continue to build on that, on that, that uh, order book we're having. What can we realistically expect in terms of annual deliveries? What are you hoping for in terms of deliveries in 2023 to start with? You also spoke about uh, some of the temporary measures like the wet leases, etc. Uh, again, on that front, what can we expect in terms of fleet addition for the calendar year? Well, we, we, we are uh, still assuming a steady influx of, of aircraft. And if you look just to the, the number of, of, of aircraft we're having uh, and the actual size of it, um, we're, we're in discussions, of course, with suppliers, what's going to be the precise moment of deliveries and so on. Yet we still do expect uh, a 40 plus uh, set of deliveries uh, for the year 23 to come. And we also talk to you then uh, on what you intend to do with the cash that you have on hand, uh, you know, over 10,000 crores at this point in time. What do you intend to do with it? 
Uh, when it comes to, to the cash position, your, your question, uh, I think it, it helped us a lot to have a strong cash position throughout the difficult COVID time. Um, it helps us to have a solid foundation. And from that, we do, we do look forward. And I'm not going to give any speculations uh, how to precisely uh, allocate it or how to precisely do it. Again, we're, we're investing in our company and in the growth of, uh, of Indigo going forward. All right, not too bad for the markets as well. We are holding at around that 18,000 odd mark. Reliance Industries is playing a good knock. We had pointed that out earlier. One of the heavyweights need to put their hand up and Reliance Industries for the time being, that's the one that's done pretty well. Time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll connect with Sanjay Kumar, the MD of IGL, to discuss their past quarter's numbers. We'll also get chatting with Dr. Ja of Midani and Harshit Kapadia of Ilara Capital will be joining in to discuss the defense space on the whole. 